talk bonds, in particular how markets have reacted to this and continue to react. Simon Michelle from Sig Fig Securities joins us now. How seriously is this being taken by uh, the bond market, Simon? Morning, James. Well, we are starting to see markets react now, uh, you know, in that last couple of weeks. And uh, what we saw on Friday was a bit of a sell-off of some of the periphery European uh, sovereign names and, uh, and some of that demand going into Germany um, and also, I think, uh, into the US as well as we saw yields mm. for those nations pull back. So we are starting to see a little bit of reaction by markets now as they reposition and just start to pull back on the exposure to some of those... Uh, uh, more risky European nations uh, and we're starting to see that reflected in yields over there. It's a little bit hard to know what's going out because on one day suddenly things are absolutely dandy, markets are going high because everything's going to be sorted out, no worries, and then a couple of days later, no, oops, sorry, Greg's, it's back on the, uh, back on the table. Yeah, it's been interesting, hasn't it? I mean, the market's been quite complacent, really, and, and I think uh, working under a view that, uh, you know, a solution would be, uh, would, would result out of these negotiations, uh, either that or, you know, we'd see uh, some delay put on that and we'd, we'd kick this issue down the road. But, uh, you know, I, I think we were talking last week that, uh, you know, as we draw closer to that, if they don't uh, come to a conclusion, I think more importantly, the, uh, the way to a solution, you know, isn't very clear at the moment, especially with the political... Uh, situation in Greece. So I think markets have very suddenly, all of a sudden, uh, uh, sort of faced that uh, possibility. Uh, we're seeing a lot more commentary around the impact of Greece leaving the euro. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, that's starting to be reflected in flows and pricing. Mm. Simon, we know that over the weekend those talks failed. They are continuing this week. They have an important meeting coming up on Thursday. So if we continue to see those talks, um, you know, caught up in a, in a bit of a stalemate. How do you expect markets to, to continue reacting? Do you expect this volatility to, to just increasing? Look, I think that's absolutely right, Leanne. I think uh, certainly, you know, it's going to undo a little bit of the work that the ECB's been doing with this quantitative easing program. We're going to see that reflected in yields. Uh, you know, I think you're going to see investors pull back on some of those periphery uh, countries and uh, pull back on exposure there. I think you're going to see it quite quiet as we lead into that, as people just sort of stand on the sidelines and, and wait to see what the outcome of this is going to play out over the next couple of weeks. Is there... Um, how realistic do you think the, the chance of Greece leaving uh, the the eurozone actually is my understanding is there's there's really there's no vehicle for that to happen there's no legislation by which that happens and, and look the idea of talking about them leaving is one thing but the actual mechanics of them leaving is an entirely different matter that's exactly right James and uh, you know I think there's a number of mechanisms they can use but there's certainly no clear view on on how that would happen I mean obviously they would want to minimize uh, volatility and uh, you know manage that very very well uh, but we don't know whether that would be, you know, on the back of a default mm. with these creditors' payments, uh, whether there would be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, long uh, period of, uh, you know, transition, essentially, to try and minimise the impact. The other thing is, you know, where does Greece go uh, once it leaves the ECB and, and, and has no access to that support as well? Down the gurgle. That's well, where exactly. Goes. That's exactly right. So, you know, there's really no, you know, it's, it's one thing to talk about the impact of the Eurozone with the Greek exit, but then it's, okay, where does Greek go? Where does Greece go if they don't have access to that funding um, you know it would be very difficult for them to get funding uh, elsewhere in financial markets so a lot of issues that I think uh, you know a lot of these stakeholders probably haven't really wanted to consider but uh, markets are now starting to uh, to wonder and price in that volatility. Mm, certainly the saga continuing and expecting that it will continue to have an effect on markets globally this week but of course one of the other big focus points this week will be uh, the Federal Reserve FOMC meeting so how are we seeing markets at the moment positioning themselves and in particular those US Treasuries how are we seeing them positioning themselves ahead of that meeting? Yeah it's interesting Leanne because we saw quite a big strong demand for US Treasury uh, at the end of last week so that actually pushed the US yields back uh, lower as people took advantage of that increase that we'd had at the beginning of this month so that was very uh, you know very positive uh, you know investors obviously still feel there's value in US yields that means that they don't think rates are going to go up anytime soon. It'll all be about forward guidance I think from the uh, from this meeting uh, you know we're certainly not expecting any change in rates but what the market will be looking is to get a, a clear picture of what the Fed's view is and where they think uh, this uh, the, the, the move by the Fed in the Fed funds rate will be at the moment if you have a look at market expectation they're pricing in a December quarter 
Uh, so it'll be really, you know, do we start now thinking about 2016, as we've heard the IMF uh, and the World Bank come out and suggest that the Fed might have to do, or, or do we stick to that timing? What do you think Janet Yellen and, uh, and the Fed think when they start getting um, a little bit of free advice from the likes of, of Lagarde? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I think that they would be very happy to hear it, but, you know, the, the, what it means is, is not a great deal because... No. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're more importantly looking to, uh, you know, manage expectation, uh, both domestically, obviously, there are certainly some, still some areas of uh, concern in the US economy. We've seen those uh, raised by commentators recently as well. But I think more importantly, it's they just want it, that to be a manageable, calm transition yeah. in mm. Fed policy. You know, even if we do get an increase, you know, we're not going to get a, uh, you know, a, a sudden a number of increases on back to back. It's going to be a very moderate increase. It'll be a psychological move obviously when that first step up is uh, but I think they've managed it very well if you look at markets you know we started to see a little bit of volatility now but we ha we are pushing that expectation a little bit longer um, obviously on the back of that slower growth uh, expectation in the US. Simon a big week this week in terms of central bank ac activity locally we have the RBA releasing those minutes from their June board meeting tomorrow how are we seeing uh, Aussie yields positioning ahead of that? Yeah, it's interesting very quiet uh, obviously we had a bit of a pullback on Aussie yields last week as well after that strength in uh, earlier this month uh, I think it's you, you're right you're a lot of data we're, we're waiting to get uh, out um, to get a bit of a, a, a forward view from the central banks and with the RBA you know, a lot in the media really about the impact of these lower interest rates uh, housing obviously a big issue uh, so it'll be interesting to see whether the RBA sticks on this you know fairly neutral bias at the moment yes sure you know they, they, they do have an ability to move down but the impact of those uh, movements is uh, is lessening as rates fall lower and lower so I think the RBA will be all about sticking on the uh, message that we saw on the back of their uh, last uh, minutes Great stuff as always, Simon. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thanks, Leanne.